Hi everyone, this is the video for hand examination just to show you what a normal hand exam looks like. Remember to start off with the appropriate sequence of looking, feeling, moving and under the three caption heading you have neurovascular assessments, function and special tests. Very important. So you start off by looking and you look at the dorsum of the hand. You start off with the nail plates. You look at the distant phalangeal joints or dips, the proximal interphalangeal joints, the metacarpal phalangeal joints, and you look at the wrists. And remember, I told you that a good mnemonic for what to look out for is R-A-S-H. That's R for rash, A for atrophy of muscles, S for swelling and scarring, and H for hyperemia or redness. Now, if there's synovitis of any of the small hand joints of the hands, they will be visibly seen. In this case, they are not visible. If it was synovitic, it would look spindly and it would be very difficult to miss. So then you look at the palms of the patient and you follow the same format of RASH, so there's no rash. Atrophy, you look at the thin eminences, the thin eminences on both sides are nice and full. You look at the hypothin eminences, they're also nice and full. Now, there's no obvious swelling, and way to look for swelling is make sure you look at the bases of the fingers because swelling in that area is indicative of flexor tenus synovitis. And make sure you look out for scars of the wrists for evidence of previous carpal tunnel syndrome surgery. And make sure you round up by looking at the elbows. And what you're looking out for is to see if there's any evidence of chronic plaque psoriasis, or any evidence of rheumatoid nodules, and even gouty tophi can be seen also in the elbows. So make sure you look properly with proper exposure above the elbows, very important. So we've looked, now it's time to feel, and what you do is four finger technique, you feel each of the joints in turn, make sure you look at the patient's face, four finger technique, so thumb and index, and thumb and index for the other hand, looking at the patient's face, very quickly you feel the pips, looking at the patient's face to see if there's any pain and what you're feeling for are bony prominences. Remember, bony prominences are good, but if they are overtly bumpy, that suggests osteoarthritis. Or if they feel very buggy and rubbery, that suggests synovitis, but normally you'd have seen synovitis before you can feel it. So make sure you take your time to feel each of these joints. In turn. Now for the MCPs, we do what we call the MCP squeeze test. So you squeeze gently enough to gently blanch, looking at the patient's face, squeeze gently and if the patient is in pain, you might notice on their face or they might withdraw. That's how you can tell. Now look at the wrists. You can do the same gentle squeeze of the wrists. Normally there's wrist swelling, you lose the contours on the wrists and then you can round up feeling by feeling at the elbows. Now, right before you're done feeling, it's important to ask the patient to make a fist so you can look at the clenched fist and make sure the mountain sign is preserved. By mountain sign, you have a mountain, a valley, mountain, valley, as I described, and in this case, that is preserved. So you've looked, you've felt, now it's time to move. Ensure that you can tell what the patient can do actively before you start to fiddle with the patient's hands passively. So active movement, so make a fist for me, open it up, fan it out for me, fan your fingers out for me, bend your fist for me, bend it down, bend it up, move it side to side, roll it round, bend the elbows, tuck it down, good. Now turn it like this, and door knob movement, good. So you, you've seen what the patient can do actively, then passively you check flexion, check check dorsiflexion rather, flexion, side to side, you roll it, looking at the patient's face, and you check the same sequence on the other hand, dorsiflexion, flexion, side to side, roll it round, and then you bend at the elbows, you bend at the elbows, and you can ask them to do the doorknob movement, which is important because it checks supination and pronation, and it just checks rotary movement at the hands. So we've looked, we felt we moved, and you can assess at this point function of the hands. So for the function of the hands, you assess grip. So squeeze my fingers tight, don't let go, don't let go. Squeeze my fingers tight, don't let go, don't let go. Good. Um, open the hands up again. 
hand to mouth on both sides, hand to mouth, yep, on the other side, hand to mouth, good. Now, four handed, four handed use? Right handed. Okay, so if you tell the patient to write the name. So. Yep, and can you attempt with the other hand to manage? So you, you should check both with the dominant hand and non-dominant hand just to see what the movements are like. And obviously you're using this opportunity to check for intention tremors as well. So handwriting is fine and you can always pick up things like micrographia and Parkinson's in instances such as this. So you get them to pick a coin. So pick that coin for me and check in the pincer grip and pick a coin with the other hand. That's great. And what you can do is you can check their pincers against each finger. Okay, that's great. Thank you. So we've looked, we've felt, we've moved, we've checked function. Now it's time for the neurovascular assessment. So we can check the vascular quickly. We check the pulse. Remember to always check the pulse with the pulps and not with your thumb because of the thumb artery. Feel the pulse and everything that is a pair, you compare. So you check on the other side. So pulse is fine and symmetrical on both sides. And for the, that's the vascular assessment done. The neuro assessment, there are three named nerves in the hands. We have the radial, we have the ulna and the median nerve, and each nerve has a sensory and a motor component. So for the sensory component of each nerve, for the ulna, do you feel me touching on this side? Yes. Okay. Does it feel the same as this side? Yes, it does. Yeah, okay. So, and that's for the ulna nerve, which is the outer border of the little finger. We check the inner border of the index finger. Do you feel me touching on that side? Yes. Does it feel the same as this? Yes. Okay. And for the radial, it's the first web space. So do you feel me touching on that side? Yes. Does it feel the same as this? Yes. Okay. So that's the sensory component of that nerve assessed. Now for the motor component of those nerves, what you do is for the radial, if there's involvement of the radial, people get a wrist drop. So you, what you want to check is resistant dorsiflexion. So if you make a fist for me, bend it backwards for me. So it's like for like, make sure you oppose the forearm so they don't engage the biceps, but they only use the um, wrist, uh, the wrist dorsiflex. So you come in with your own clenched hand. Stop me pushing you down. That's normal. That's fantastic. Stop me pushing you down. Now, if there's any weakness of dorsiflexion, you would be able to oppose the patient's dorsiflexion, but in this case, we can't. So there's no more radial function, both sensory and motor. So for the ulnar nerve, it supplies the interossi, which is the dorsal interossi are for abductors and the plantar interossi are for adduction. So for the interossi, so stop me pushing in, make sure you oppose again, stop me pushing in, index for index, little finger, stop me pushing in. Stop me pushing it in, stop me pushing it in. That's normal, fantastic. And for the median, point your palms towards the ceiling, thumbs towards the ceiling. You, you stop that from, you oppose that again, stop me pushing you down, stop me pushing you down. That's great. So we've looked, felt, moved, and we've assessed the function and neurovascular assessments, and it's for special tests. And the special tests are the Fallon's and Tinnos test. And for Tinnos test, it's a tap test. You tap here, and what you're tapping for are pins and needles after 10 seconds. Any pins and needles? No. And you tap here. Any pins and needles? No. And for the Fallon's test, people do a prayer sign, but I like to just flex at the wrist, and you flex for 10 seconds. Any pins and needles? No. Yeah. And what you would expect in a positive test is paresthesia in the lateral three and a half digits and you do it on the other side. Any pins and needles there? No. Okay, thank you. So that is, thank you for the examination, for allowing us to exam. So that is um, a complete hand exam, normal hand exam, and any of the maladies would be very obvious if you follow the right sequences and it can't be missed. Thank you.